Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a Minecraft 1.14.2 server. This is a step-by-step -step guide on creating your 1.14.2 server. We go over everything from where to download the server file, to how to install it in Minecraft, to how to port forward. All of it is covered in this video. However, this is not a 24-hour server. It is only up and running when your computer is up and running. On top of that, it is a server that requires you to port forward for your friends to join. Port forwarding is something that we teach here and it's going to be covered, but it is a little more difficult and and it's something that some people just don't want to do. On top of all of that, this is not a public server. It's meant for you and your friends and your family, people you trust. This server is hosted on your own local IP address. What that means is that anyone who has this IP can figure out where you live. They can hit you offline via DDoS attack. And like I said, they can figure out where you live, your city, your state, your region, even latitude and longitude coordinate. It is all involved and can be gotten via your IP address. So it's very, very, very important that you do not give this out to people you don't trust. It's only meant for your friends and family. Now, if you want a server that is up all the time, that is 24 hours that you can give out to everybody. If you want a server that isn't hosted on your own computer, for example, if you can barely run Minecraft itself, you can't run a server and Minecraft at the same time. You'll need to be able to do that to be able to host a server this way. So what do you do? If you want a server that's public or if your computer is too bad to run a Minecraft server on it, well, you get a server from someone like Apex Minecraft hosting. You can check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. We actually love Apex so much that we host our own server on them, play.breakdowncraft.com. But with Apex, they host a server for you. It's not on your own computer. It's on their hardware. And on top of that, you can give the IP address out to anybody and everybody. Whether it's someone random who just randomly finds your server on the internet, or it's someone you know, your friends and family, doesn't matter. You can give them the Apex Minecraft hosting server IP. And guess what? They'll be able to join it, play all that stuff. Additionally, it's very easy to set up plugins on your Apex Minecraft hosting server. It is very easy to install mods over there. Anything and everything you want to do, it is very, very easy to do. And you can set up an Apex server in less than five minutes. See how long this video is? Yeah. On Apex servers, you can set it up in less than five minutes. So go check out Apex in the first link down below. Again, that is the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. If you want an incredible server that's not hosted on your own computer and can be given out to anybody and everybody. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump right on into this. First and foremost, we need to download the Minecraft server file. You can do that finding the link in the description down below. Everything I mentioned in this video is linked down below. Nevertheless, once you're here, you'll see this. This is our in-depth tutorial on how to make a server. If I go too fast in this video, you can come go through this article. However, once you're here, you want to click on download Minecraft, basically download the Minecraft server file here. It'll take us off to here where we want to click on download Minecraft underscore server dot one dot 14 dot two dot jar. Click on that and it will go ahead and download in the bottom left the server.jar file. Now, if you're on Mozilla Firefox, it's popped up in the center of your screen. You may have to save that file on Mozilla Firefox in the center of your screen. On Google Chrome in the bottom left, we can click keep. This is 100% safe. We're downloading it from Minecraft.net, which is the same place you download the Minecraft launcher from. So once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. Now on my desktop, I have the server.jar. If this isn't on your desktop, don't freak out. It's in your downloads folder. Just click the little windows icon. It's in the top left for me, but it's in the bottom left of your screen. That little windows icon in the bottom left, click on that and then type in downloads. Once you've typed in downloads, you'll have this, the downloads folder. In here, you'll have the server.jar. Drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once it's on your desktop, we want to go ahead and right click, create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want, but I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why? Because that is the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. Two incredible survival servers, one with player-based economy, one with server-based economy, and custom skyblock. So come play with this play.breakdowncraft.com. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and take this server.jar and drag it into that folder. Now we can go ahead and open up this folder, and we want to right click in it, create a new text document, right like so, see new text document. You can just leave that named new text document and then you want to open up this new text document. Once this new text document is opened up, I have to find it on my computer excuse me, was on my second monitor. Here it is. Once this new text document is open, what we want to do is go to the description of the video and find this. These are basically codes, right? That's basically what they are, but they are codes that will launch your server and determine how much RAM your server has. Now, I would recommend hosting your server with at least two gigabytes of RAM. Back in the past, you could host a server on one gigabyte, but 114 doesn't really allow it. You need at least two gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and host the server with four gigabytes just because more is always better when it comes to RAM with Minecraft servers these days. So go ahead and give it as much as you want, but I'm going to do four. So copy that from the description down below. Come over here and paste it. One note I do want to say is that you can't run and add more RAM to your server than your computer has. You also need to make sure you have enough RAM left to run Minecraft after creating your server. Nevertheless, once you've pasted that into your new text document from the description, go ahead and click File, Save As, and then we want to save it in the server folder we created. And as we can see, that's where it's at. We want to name this run.bat. 
Then we want to change the save type as to all files. So we want to name it run.bat and save type as all files. Then go ahead and click save. Now we can go ahead and close out of this document we created. And then in the server folder here, as you can see, there's the run.bat file. We can delete the new text document. So go ahead and delete that. Now double click on the run.bat file. At this point, it's gonna go ahead and open up the server. But as you can see, it failed. No problem. That's what we wanted it to do actually. So go ahead and press any key to continue. And then you should have this eula.txt file. If you don't, no problem. We just need to do a quick little download of the Java development kit. You can find this in the description down below. Not only do you need this to run a Minecraft server, you need to install Forge mods, Optifine, all sorts of stuff. So come here, download this, and this tutorial walks you through exactly how to do that. If you do download that and it still doesn't work no worries we have the jar fix you need to download this run it on your computer and then finally you'll be able to double click on the run.bat file and get it to work so once it does work it will fail and you'll have this eula.txt go ahead and double click on that to open it up go to this link right here and as long as you agree to that eula change eula equals false to eula equals true true exactly like that then go ahead and do file save right like so and now at this point we can go ahead and double click on the run.bat file again now the server will start right on up. It'll load the world, it'll do everything we need it to do. And then once it's done, we can play on it, right? We can open up Minecraft and we can make sure it's up and running. And we're gonna do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Minecraft real quick. Now, you can join your server this way, but your friends will not be able to join your server. So that's something to keep in mind. This is just for you to test your server on. For your friends to be able to join, you will need to port forward. We're gonna walk you through how to do that, but we're gonna test the server real quick. First and foremost though, what we wanna do is come up here to the top left, click on that little Windows icon. It's in the bottom left for you, by the way, that Windows icon. Type in CMD, right, command prompt. See that CMD right there? Click on that, and then once you're here, you wanna go ahead and type in IPCONFIG. So IPCONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. Now, if we look up here, we can see that the server is done and it is set up. Now, over here we have a few things, but there's only two numbers we need. We need our IPv4 address and our default gateway. These are probably different for you, but for me, my IPv4 address is 192.168.1.184. For you, your default gateway is probably different, but for me, it is 192.168.1.1. If you have two default gateways, like I do, you wanna go with the one that's just a numbers, not the one that's got letters in it. As you can see, there's two here, one on top and one on bottom. We just want the one on bottom that has just numbers. So nevertheless, we can come over to Minecraft click on multiplayer, click direct connect, and then go ahead and type in our IPv4 address from over here. In my case, 192.168.1.184. And then if we hit join, it'll join us on into the server. As you can see, it is set up and there we go. We are joined on in. Now at this point, if we tried to join like our friends would off of the public IP address, it wouldn't work. Why is that? Because we need to port forward. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, we need to go ahead and stop the server. Now we do need these numbers down here, our IPv4 address and default gateway. So I'm just gonna leave that window up. Now we gotta go back to our browser and we wanna type in to a brand new tab, our default gateway. So in our case, that was 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. Now you'll have a page that looks most likely completely different from this, but you'll have some sort of a login box on it. As you can see, here's my login box. Yours might come in from the top. It might be a different looking like interface, but you'll have a login box. What do you enter in that login box? Well, you enter your router's password, which you can find here on this website. This is different from your Wi-Fi password. So once you're here, you wanna go through this tutorial. It's going to show you exactly how to find your router's password. It has helped over 87,000 people do that. So go through this entire tutorial and it'll help you out. Usually people find it by the third method, by the way. But nevertheless, once you've got your router's password, you can come back over here and log on in. Now, once we've logged in, we need to port forward. Now, I do want to remind you that Apex Minecraft Hosting does not require you to port forward with their servers. So if you want a quick and easy way to set up a server without port forwarding, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the perfect way to do it. Nevertheless, port forwarding can be overwhelming, but we do have an in-depth guide on port forwarding here. This video walks through the top routers that are out there today and how to port forward on them. Even if your router isn't on that list, I would recommend going and watching this video. You can find the link in the description down below because it's going to have a bunch of different terms in there and now you'll know what to look for on your router. However, let's go ahead ahead and do it on mine. So for port forwarding, for me, it is in security. For you, it may be in apps and gaming. It might be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It might be in advanced. It might be in advanced, advanced. It might be NAT forwarding. It might be NAT forwarding slash triggering. It might just be called port forwarding. It might be called apps and gaming. I think I already said that one, but there's so many different names for it. For me, it is in security. And then for you, it might be in apps and gaming. As you can see, mine's in apps and gaming. And then for me, it's in single port forwarding. Quite the rabbit hole there. But as you can see, we were looking for port forwarding and we didn't find single port forwarding. There 
There are a bunch of names for it. I gave you quite a few there, but there it is for me. So now we want to go ahead and click add new single port forward. Now for you, once you find port forwarding, you'll have some sort of application name. This might be called ID, it might just be called name. Basically it's just an identifier of what this port forward is. You can name it whatever, but I'm going to put Minecraft just so we know it's a Minecraft port forward. Now for anything to do with port, port one, port two, external port, internal port, first port, second port, anything to do with port whatsoever. You want to put in 25565. So for us, external port 25565. Internal port, what did I say? 25565 if it involves port whatsoever. So we're going to do 25565 because that mentions the word port. For protocol, we want to do both or TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP, but either way, we want to select both in order to make sure it works. Device IP, we can go ahead and do 192.168.1.184. Now you might be like, how did I get that number? That's our IPv4 address. If we come over here, our IPv4 address is 192.168.1.184. And that's what that is. That's what you're going to enter there for your device IP, your local IP. You might just have a drop down box of devices. If that's the case, just select the device that your, is your computer, right? If yours is like John's computer, click on that because that's your local computer. Now, at this point, most people can click save and click apply. Some people though need their public IP address or an external IP address for their port forward. However, even if you don't need it for your port forward, you need it to join your server because that's how your friends will join your server. So let's go ahead and get that. You can find the link to what's my IP in the description down below and it will take you here. Now here you'll see your IP address is you can go ahead and copy this. Now for you, this is all blacked out except these last three digits, 143. And that's again, because you don't wanna give your IP address out to everybody. This server is just meant for you and your friends. If you wanna give a server to everybody, you need to get a server from someone like Apex. So that's something that is very important and I can't stress enough. And the reason I say that's so important is because over here on the right hand side, you can see everything someone can get from your IP. Latitude and longitude coordinates, your zip code, your city, your region, all of that can be grabbed from your IP address. That's why it's so important to keep this private. Now, for me, you can see the last three digits just so you'll know it's the same when we paste it in game. At this point, if you needed to port forward with your public IP address, you can bring it over here and paste it in, save, apply, and then you're done with your port forward. If you didn't need that, we can go ahead and open up Minecraft. I'm gonna do that by minimizing our browser. Now we need to make sure we start this server, but before we do that, there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is open our server.properties file. So go ahead and double click on this server.properties file. For me, it's gonna automatically open in Notepad. For you, you may need to select to open it with Notepad. Once you're in here, find the server-ip. That's gonna be right here. And next to server-ip, type in your local IPv4 address. For me, that's going to be 192.168.1.184. For you, it's probably going to be completely different, but it's right over here in the command prompt. Just type it in right over here in server properties. Then do file, save, and now we can go ahead and jump into multiplayer, direct connect, this time to our public IP address. Again, you can see those last three digits, 143, same as what we saw earlier. And then we can go ahead and click join server. At this point, it'll launch on up and put us right on in to our Minecraft server. Now, if it doesn't connect, you might wanna make sure your server is started, which is uh, our issue. So let's go ahead and click cancel there. And then we can come back over here, run the server. <laughs> Once the server is started up, we'll be able to join on in. That was a pretty big fail, but I think we saved it. So that's the first thing. If you do have issues joining your server, is going to be that, making sure the server is running. In our case, it wasn't. But nevertheless, make sure your server is running, and then you'll be able to join on in. Also, if you do have any issues, it's most likely an issue with your port forward, or there is a firewall either on your router or on your computer blocking the connection. Either one. Right? It could be on your router, could be on a computer, but you need to find it and open that firewall in order to let people in. Nevertheless, now our server is done over here. We can direct connect. Again, you can see the last three digits are all you can see. Join server, and now it will launch right on in. That was, a, that was kind of a fail. That was kind of a fail. I suppose it could have went worse though. I mean, it could have just like not worked at all, but there we go. We're launching right on up and here we are in game. We can see that we are in a 114 server by opping ourselves. So we want to come over here into the console type op and then whatever your username is, in my case, that's Nick's games. And then we'll see in game, we can now do slash game mode creative. Let's see. There it is. Made Nick King an operator. Actually, forgot I was on my alt here. So yeah, they're made Nick King an operator. And now we can do slash game mode creative, right like so. And we can fly away. We can double check it's in 114 by doing my favorite thing to do in 114, spawning pandas in random jungle or non-jungle areas. So let's go ahead and do that. 
get some baby pandas in there, and I don't think there's any denying that the pandas are in the game, and we are in 114.2. If you have any questions about starting your 114 server, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to come play with us at play.breakdowncraft.com if you're looking for an incredible Minecraft server with grief protected survival, custom skyblock. It is absolutely incredible. You will love it. 100% custom, 100% awesome, and over 200 players online nearly every single day. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love these pandas, and I am out. Peace.